Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over in this HVAC training video is how to draw a deep vacuum quickly. So in this case, we're using a 6 CFM pump. I'm going to show you all the tools that I'm using, and I'm going to show you the process of setting it up and actually doing our vacuum. So we have two ports on our 6 CFM vacuum pump. You could use a 6 CFM, a 3 CFM. This system right here is a residential split system. So you have an outdoor condensing unit. You have about uh, 60 feet of line set, and then you have an evaporator quill in the inside of the house. Always make sure to change your vacuum pump oil, or you won't be able to draw deep vacuums that actually wear the vacuum pump out if you just reuse old oil that you've used over and over and over again. So that oil definitely has to be changed, especially when you're doing a, uh, a system that had a compressor burnout or something like that. You definitely change the oil right away. In reference to the hoses right here, we're using a 3 8 hose here and this side is actually 3 8 and you see that there is no valve core depressor in the inside this side's quarter inch you see that there's no valve core depressor in there our second hose that we're using once again uh, has no valve core depressors on the inside if you have a hose that has one in it you can actually just unscrew them out we use three valve core removal tools these are Appians um, these basically are rated down to 20 microns and I always take the Schrader valves out of the side. I don't really feel a need to have them in the side. I use three of them and I don't use a manifold gauge set. You see that we already have our Schrader valves, otherwise known as valve cores. We have them already pulled out of this port and this port. And so basically we're going to be putting our valve core removal tools on here. And the reason for the third installed just to be able to isolate off our micron gauge. I've had pretty good luck with these uh, CPS micron gauges. I've also uh, used the Subco uh, micron gauges. They've lasted me a long time. Uh, so uh, this is the one we're gonna use. So I'm now gonna go ahead and hook all this stuff up. We don't need these right here, the parts that actually unscrew the valve core. So we're gonna set them off to the side. One thing I want you to know is that I don't put the valve cores back in until I have positive pressure in the system. So uh, that, that way I know that I don't lose my vacuum. So that's the way I do it. Now we're ready to turn this system on. This vacuum pump does not come equipped with a gas ballast on it. Uh, it seems that the more expensive vacuum pumps come with this, but uh, I use this and I have very good success with this 6 CFM vacuum pump. This is a GB. I actually have this linked down in the description below. And I also have the valve core removal tools and the micron gauge listed down there as well if you're looking for them. So normally if it has a gas ballast, you would open the gas ballast up, turn the vacuum pump on, and then close the gas ballast down. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and turn the vacuum pump on, and we'll make sure that our micron gauge is on. When the vacuum is done, we'll open the service valves with an adjustable wrench. We'll be holding the valve, actually this one right here, we can actually get the adjustable wrench around, and we'll take them caps off and we'll put our uh, service wrench down in there in order to open it up. Let's turn the micron gauge on. It's on microns, M-I-C. Turn the vacuum pump on now. And now we're drawing. What will happen is on the micron gauge, it will be reading in the thousands, oh there it goes now, and then it will go ahead and drop down. What I'm going to do is once it gets down fairly low, maybe around a thousand microns or something like that, I'm going to just turn these just quickly off and then on just in case there's a little pocket of air in there. So right now you see we're, we're lowering pretty quickly. There is no negative side uh, to dropping the pressure very quickly with a vacuum. Some, of, some people have got confused with the, the EPA 608 uh, test questions and things, uh, but the water won't, water won't freeze in, inside a system like this. So this, this system is very big, basically it has to do with drawing heat out quickly due to uh, the removal of non-condensables out of the system. It's just a matter of removing heat more so than the drop in pressure. 
So we're dropping pretty good. We're at 660 right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut these off and then turn them back on. I just want to make sure that there's no air trapped in these for when I actually turn them off again. You saw that the vacuum went up quite a bit. Actually, it went up pretty high. I'm just going to go ahead and do that one more time. Just to make sure that there's no issues. Okay, there's no issues. So there was a, quite a big pocket of air. You, that's why you saw the micron level rise that high. If this was an existing system uh, and you had refrigerant oil somewhere is trapped in there, say in the evaporator quill, you would want to do an oil blowout before drawing a vacuum from both sides of the system. An oil blowout basically is you're putting about 100 psi in through the liquid line and you're letting it come out through the suction line. What that does is it blows the oil that would be in the uh, 3 8 tubing in the evaporator quill. It basically blows the oil onto the sidewall so that you can draw a vacuum through it. Now we're down to 300 microns, 290, and we're going to keep going. So it actually happened fairly quickly. This is all in real time. This is about 65 feet of line set. The evaporator quill is new. Uh, we're using a small piece of the line set that goes from the crawl space up into the attic. Uh, and then we brazed onto there just because the house has a lot of jogs in it uh, and it would be a little rough trying to run a whole new line set. I typically like to run a whole new line set when possible, but in this case, it just wasn't feasible. So we're just about down to 200 microns where my target is. And when I get down to there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut these two valves off and I'm going to turn the vacuum pump off. And then we're just going to leave this valve in the on position. And we're going to just read our micron level, just make sure that it doesn't rise. The less hoses you have, um, the less restrictions, the faster the vacuum will go. So right now, when I valve these off, that'll be a test to see if there's a leak in the system. Also, if there's any water uh, in the system that did get frozen and then it's unfreezing and ex expanding and, and causing pressure in the system, but that sh really shouldn't occur on this big of a system. That typically will only occur, say, if you're using a 6 CFM or a 3 CFM pump, like on a very small little refrigerator or something like that, and the line set happen to have a lot of moisture in it. If you ever are concerned about water freezing, uh, what you could do is just leave the fan run. Leave the evaporator fan running, and that what that will do is that will put a heat load on the evaporator quill. Uh, that'll help with uh, evacuation. Here we go. Turn those two off, and then we're going to turn our vacuum pump off. So we're at 180 microns. We're going to let this sit for 10 minutes. I like to do a 10-minute vacuum test right after I do my 10-minute pressure test with nitrogen. So this is a uh, carrier and Bryant system. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the suction line first. It's been 10 minutes and it's holding 200 microns. That hasn't moved. So now we're going to go ahead and get ready to open that service valve. So we're going to put this wrench right here and we're going to valve off the micron gauge just to make sure that that doesn't rise and have pressure coming in here basically. We don't want to have pressure uh, from the refrigerant entering into the micron gauge. So we can go ahead and disconnect our micron gauge just in case that valve doesn't hold. You have to press really hard on these so that's why I have an adjustable wrench on it as well.
you don't have to force it at the top and in fact I've seen some systems they forced it so hard uh, they've ended up stripping this right here some of the older ones have a ring at the top so you don't want to pop that ring out and that's it so there is no like real back seat on these this one I can't can't really get that on there so I'm going to just hold the liquid line there we go that one wasn't tight at all that's pretty good So that's how you do the vacuum pump and break the vacuum with refrigerant and now we're going to go ahead and put the Schrader valves back in. Now also, you have less vacuum pump wear and tear when you do a vacuum real fast. This isn't even warm. It really isn't even warm. So, uh, But what I typically do is I'll screw these on, but I won't screw them on all the way. I'll screw them all the way on later. Now to put the valve cores back in, basically you just have the valve core on the end, you push this forward, you're going to screw it in just like that. Now, we have positive pressure, so that's going to push that out. Now, what I like to do is just purge if there's any air right here. I just purge that out. Okay. Same thing here. We're going to put this in. Positive pressure. Purge a little bit of air out. Now if this is straight, we'll go ahead and put this in. You have to push forward on it as you tighten. Just like that. Now we'll take this part off just to make sure that it is sealing the refrigerant in the line set and service valve. So you see that's in there now. There's nothing coming out. We'll do the same thing with the back. That was a little bit awkward. Uh, trying to do that while you still maintaining a good field of vision here, but normally it's not that hard. We don't hear any problem with refrigerant coming out, but just to verify, we're going to take our Rector Seal leak detector, and I have this linked down in the description below. So you're filling up the hole here, you're filling up the hole here, and if there is a leak, you'll see either foaming or you'll see a bubble coming out. I can't describe how important this step is, uh, just because sometimes those Schrader valves, they just do not seal up uh, very well. So make sure to leak check them, otherwise you're going to end up having all the refrigerant and all the work that you just put into this leaking right out. Now all we have to do is disconnect this, and in reference to the bubble leak detector, you just take a little nitrogen, you blow that out, and then you're good to go. So this is just two valve core removal tools put together. If you're looking for the tools and supplies used in this video, I have them all linked down in the comment section, description section below. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.